Hello everyone, welcome back. This is a new lecture in your course Git and GitHub by Adionics. My name is Ahmed and in this section we are discussing working with remote repositories. Now in the previous lectures we have seen how we can issue push and pull requests to a remote repository so that other developers can work with our repository and make changes and can review our changes and we can review their changes in a nice collaboration provided by Git and GitHub. Now let's have a look at branching, which is another cool feature of version control systems. So first, let's discuss the need for branching. So far, you and your fellow developers are working on two files of the project, which is index.html and about.html. But now you realize that about.html page needed a different content than the present one. Another developer thought the same. So the two of you have thought the same about about.html file, but one of you thought about a content and the other one thought about a totally different one. So if you, if, if both of you worked on the same file and tried to push that same file to the repository, a conflict will arise because which file is considered the correct one or which file is considered the one that will be merged to the master repository or to the original repository, if you want to call it. So in this case, you can have your own branch to work on it on about.html page and he or she, the other fellow developer, can have another branch where he can make the changes that he or she sees that it is more necessary than yours. Then, after both of you have finished their work, both branches can be reviewed by yourselves and your other fellow developers or whoever is in charge of reviewing the changes and signing them off. And then the branch that is agreed upon can be then merged with the master branch and merged accordingly with the project itself. So this is the need for branching. It can also be used in software developer if you are a developer and you are developing a software, even if you do not have other developers with you in the team, branching may help you tackle different bugs in some sort of isolation. So imagine that you are working on an application, on a word processing application, for example, and then you suddenly realize that the application has misbehaved in one of, its, of one of its functions or one of its tasks. Perhaps when you clicked on a button, that button didn't get the action or didn't display what it was supposed to. So instead of taking the whole project and start making changes that may affect other functions of the project, that may affect other areas of the application that were working normally because the changes that you are making may have did something wrong, you can have a branch, create a branch of this software development project and do whatever changes you see that they can solve this bug without affecting the rest of the project. And once you tested this thoroughly and once you think that this bug has been solved, then you can merge this branch with the master branch and perhaps produce a new version of the product that has this bug fix. Anyway, this is the need for branching. Let's now discuss how we can make a branch in Git. Now, in order to create a branch for working with about the HTML page, for example, we're going to do the following. We are here on machine number one, and we decided we are developer number one, web zero one, if you wish to call it. We are going to create a branch in order to start working with this page about HTML. The first developer or Web01 decided that this page has to be dramatically changed. So he was going, he is going to create a branch for this. In order to do that, you're going to issue the following command, git branch, and then you give that branch a name. So let's give it the name about hyphen 01, since we are on Web01 machine or client. So we are gonna call it about hyphen 01. And as a matter of fact, you will have to avoid some characters when you are uh, naming your branch names, specifically this and this, the dot and the double dot, because they have uh, specific meanings in Git commands. So you are better off working with either alphanumeric characters and the hyphens. Okay, so we have chosen here about hyphen 01 to be our branch name, and let's press enter. There will be no output to this command. However, if you want to make sure that this branch has been created, you can check the output of this command git branch just like that without any arguments, and it will show you that we are currently on the branch master, represented here by the asterisk at the left of the name, and about hyphen zero one also is a new branch that has been added to the, to the project. However, since we did not make any comments to about hyphen zero one, we are still at master, and this deserves a little note. A side note here, which is that Git would refer to a branch only as a commit, a specific commit. This is this is the branch in Git. In Git world, a branch is just a hash of a commit. You did a commit and you wanted this commit to be apparent in itself for other commits, and you want it to be separate from the main tree, 
the master, the master tree. So you have instructed Git to point to a hash of a comet and name this hash a specific name. In our case, it's about dash zero one or hyphen zero one. And then every subsequent commits to this one, this will be its parent, not master. No, this one will be the parent of subsequent commits so that you can isolate completely those commits from the commits done on the master. Now, if somebody is still working a master and he or she are doing his or her own commits here, this is not going to be affected. So about hyphen zero one will not affect master and master will not affect about the hyphen zero one. Both of them can work together in parallel without destroying each other's work or without affecting each other's work. And that is the power of branching. Now let's get back to our topic. The next step you may want to do is to switch to the new branch. As we, as we have just said, we are now currently at the master branch. That is because we did not make any commits to our new branch. So technically we are still on the master branch. So in order to switch to the new branch, in order to instruct Git that any push or pull requests that you are going to make are going to be made to the about branch, you will have to issue a command like this. Git check out, sorry, git check out about hyphen zero one. Now you have switched to branch about hyphen zero one. This is your current branch. This is the branch where you're going to make your changes and where you're going to pull and push from and to. However, if you have any uncommitted changes in the master branch, you are trying to check out to a new one, Git will deny the actions as you must commit the changes first. So switching to another branch will effectively give you the contents of that branch even if those contents differed than the contents of the branch that you were working with. So any changes that have been done in master, any files that have been added and they were not committed to the branch will disappear as soon as you switch to about hyphen zero one. And actually, Git will prevent you from doing this. It will prevent you from switching to another branch while you have uncommitted changes in the branch where you were. So if you want to override this behavior, you can use the minus minus force, as you can see here. So it's git check out minus minus force followed by the name of the branch in order to force uncommitting any changes that have been done to the previous branch. Now, let's say that we have checked out already to about hyphen one and we want to make some changes to the about.html page and you want to push those changes to the remote repository so that they can be reviewed by other developers and possibly pulled and more changes could be made. So in that case, let's just ensure that we are in about hyphen one. Okay, now let's have a look at about and let's make the changes that we need to make to this file for which we have created this branch. So let's say that instead of saying about this website, let's say about this web application, for example, maybe website was not appealing to this developer. Now let's say about this application instead of about this website. So those were the changes that this developer made to about the HTML. And then he or she needs to upload or check out she he or she needs to update the remote repository with those changes. So I'm going to issue this command git push minus u origin about hyphen one. So what I'm doing here is that I'm going to push the contents of about hyphen zero one to the remote repository, but also I want it to be tracked. Tracking this branch means that I no longer need to specify that I want it to be reflected to the origin repository, the remote repository, I want it to be automatically mapped or automatically tracked by that remote repository so that further, if I make changes, I will just issue git push or git pull without having to specify the, the remote branch or the local branch. So let's press enter and of course enter the credentials. Okay, now let's have a look at the messages that have appeared. Here we have to HTTPS github.com slash abachmeet slash greeter. This is our remote repository. And then let's see here, it has created a new branch about hyphen zero one at the origin remote repository and also branch about zero one or hyphen zero one set to be track, set to track remote branch about hyphen zero one from origin and origin as we have mentioned before is the remote repository. So this means that any changes that I make to this repository or to this branch Let's make another change about this application. Let's say it's at another uh, H2 heading, perhaps. This 
example, let's say this is a GitHub playground, for example. Whatever change we need to make, then let's save and we can push this to the remote repository just by issuing this command git push. Okay, and it can be perhaps we need to add first and check out and commit minus m edit github playground like this okay, and then let's push the command okay as you can see here it has pushed the changes to the remote repository at the remote branch about hyphen zero one with the hash specifying uniquely specifying this commit or this change and now all the changes have been pushed to the remote repository using just git push. Okay, now in the next lecture, we're going to have a look at how to merge branches after we are done making changes. So, see you next.